Okay guys, it's time for me to be a woman of my word and do what I preached everybody else, which is call until you cry. And uh, the abuse doesn't happen in a freezer. So with breeding season upon us, I'm down here a lot with my bucks. And I, right now I have three mature bucks, one he's a yearling buck, and then I have two younger bucks in the barn. So right now I'm sitting right at six bucks. And believe it or not, I've got one more buck coming because genetic diversity is a thing on a farm. In order to be able to breed up and to keep bettering your stock, genetic diversity can be a really handy tool to breed in the right direction. When I say in the right direction, it means that daughters are improved over dams, you're producing really good sires that are putting good udders or, or good attributes for whatever species or whatever type of production animal you might be breeding. Down here, because tonight I actually have to separate two of my bucks, and these guys have been here guys for forever. You, they've, Dexter, they've been down here, and they've been on our farm since they were eight weeks old. Well, one since they were six. Hey, you stop that. That's there's nothing to be barking about. One since they were six, six weeks old, and uh, Dexter's not going to be the one that's going to go to the processor. But we do have Flu, who is over here screaming, and we have Lunar, who is also over here screaming. There's a lot of testosterone going, and honestly, because of genetic diversity, I have known all year that Flu and love bug we're not going to be able to stay with me this breeding season it's time to shake up my genetic pool a little bit i know lunar just got here he came oh as a couple months old and he's now two years old so he's been here for about a year and a half really love his genetics i love everything behind them so i'm using him heavily i got another really nice buck that i just bought that will push my herd in the right direction and with that being said that means that there's just not a lot of work for these other two guys to do. So while they're down here being bucks and doing the things that bucks do, they're actually not going to be doing the thing that bucks do. They're not going to be in my breeding program this year. And I've known this for months, guys. Like I have known these are not the go forward bucks for my herd that these guys are going to have to leave eventually. And I've been marketing them all summer long, just about. One of the things a lot of us are facing is inflation. There's a lot of inflation right now. And believe it or not, that also hits us in the livestock world. A lot of people got into homesteading, have decided um, after the Rona was no longer such a, a big deal that um, homesteading is just not for them. And with many people buying goats or even maybe going into um, livestock husbandry with dairy goats, in order to have milk, you have to have, they have to breed, they have to reproduce. That's the only way that you're gonna get, be getting milk. And that means that there's just a lot of um, supply and not a lot of demand because a lot of people are, are cinching down those pocketbooks, they're hurting in their wallets. So people are either getting rid of stock or they're just not in the, they're not in the market for um, expensive stock. And while I'm not gonna tell you that these guys are expensive, I will tell you that for what I've been trying to sell them for is a fraction, a very small fraction for what I actually paid for them back when these were my first serious bucks to try to take my herd in, th in the correct direction that I wanted to go. I have exhausted all of that. So, because nobody wants to buy them, it's time for genetic diversity. They're not going to be working. They are literally just going to be sucking resources from the, the bucks that I'm going to be trying to grow out this year and the um, mature bucks that I'm supporting. Uh, because of that, tomorrow morning I will be taking flu and love bug to a processor. And I know some of you are already saying, well, take them to the sale barn. And to you, I will say that abuse does not happen in the freezer. But the big reason is because I can't ensure that these guys are going to get the same care, the same experience, the same management that they get here. And that's just really not fair to them. They're not in control of where they go. And at least I know when I take them to the processor, because these are bucks, they'll be going for halal production because they are intact, that these will be going um, to be um, somebody's dinner that needs their animals done a certain way. This isn't gonna go to a sale barn where they'll be bought for pennies on the dollar and then probably still end up at a processor or possibly mistreated, abused. Maybe they would decline in health because someone didn't know how to take care of goats. They didn't have the same management practices. And this is just how I ensure that these boys have a wonderful and 
productive, happy life from the moment they stepped onto my farm until the moment they leave. And even though some people might say, well, the stress of driving them a new place, these guys have been shown, which is so sad. These guys are show bucks. They've actually done well in their rings. Because they have shown and they've shown extensively, it means they're used to loading on a trailer. They're used to loading in the back of the truck and going for a few hours of a ride. And it doesn't ever stress them out. They're just as rowdy and randy when they get there as they are when they're here at home. So I know that's not going to stress them out either. This is the kindest thing that I can do for them that also ensures that they have, like I said, a good life from the moment that they've come into my care until the moment they leave. We vet our buyers so heavily here. We ask lots of questions. We make sure that the, the, you know they know if you have any questions, if you buy from us, we're your mentors now. You ask us so that we make sure that our animals, when they pass from our care to your care, that they're going to get a fair shake. They're gonna get a, a couple sets of eyes when they're not feeling good to help um, diagnose things that might be wrong with them and get them on a good course of treatment so that they can keep being happy, healthy, and productive. And because I either haven't been able to vet people that I felt comfortable sending them to, or people weren't interested. I'm not gonna send them to a sale barn because literally when these guys walk in as bucks, they probably will be bought for pennies on the dollar and the person who buys them will still turn around and take them to a processing plant because they know they're gonna get more for a live weight on them than probably what they paid for them. So this just cuts out the middleman and my heart is so heavy. But this is when I start telling people like stewardship is hard. And that when you say that you're going to do something or you set set down expectations for levels of management in your herd, um, for your bucks, for your does, for whatever species it is that you are stewarding, it is so important to set high expectations and to set good parameters and to say, if they can't be met, this is plan B because this is the way that I make sure that those expectations are met, that that, that level of management is maintained and that all parties' best interest is kept. In this situation, they're not gonna be happy here not breeding. I'm not gonna be happy feeding them with them not breeding. They, they'll, they're they gonna get frustrated and when bucks are in rut like this and they're frustrated, they end up hurting one another. I have young stock that I'm getting ready to bring in here and to start um, integrating in. They will hurt them out of frustration. Um, not to mention that there's just, at that point, they're just draining my resource. My resources financially and putting more tax on the land in this pen that they're in, um, even if we rotate them out into a different pen, it just doesn't make any sense for them to stay. And like I said, my my hope was that they would go somewhere and that they would do what bucks do, which is go meet the ladies, sweet talk, wine and dine, and you know, bring in another generation of goats that are improvements over their dams. And I said it when we first started breeding um, for January kids back in like late July. If these guys are not gone by the beginning of October, it's October 1st today, they cannot stay here because they start taking finances from the bucks that I want here. They start um, possibly even injuring and causing me more bills when it comes to vet visits. They cost me bills in, in food. They're taxing this pen because the population is a little raised. And I just, none of that is good for any of them. Sad to say that the, uh, it's the end of an era for these two breeding bucks that I brought on specifically to improve. And I'm gonna tell you what guys, I have loved their daughters. They have improved the does that I put them over. I am nothing but tickled pink with the daughters that I have and have retained and granddaughters. And in some cases, great granddaughters for these two bucks. But this is the only way that I can make sure that they live a good life from start to finish under my care and that they don't come into a situation that's not good for them, that's unsavory, that's unhealthy, that's just, I, I have to do this for them and I have to do it for me. If I thought I could manage keeping them here for their entire lives and all of that, I would, but that's just financially not feasible. And right now with the economy and inflation, it's important that we, we stay feasible here. This really is just the better path for them and for me. And it's a part of stewardship and it sucks. Well, this morning is their first morning without love bug and flu. And they just seem so unsure. So I'm not gonna lie guys, like this morning was really tough. <laughs> Um, there were tears shed on the way home because it just, it feels unfair, but 
honestly, this is the best, the best thing for all parties. And honestly, they were not afraid. They, they unloaded without a hitch. They were put into a pen with big Bordeaux and they were in big lady heaven, um, doing all the things that bucks do blubber, um, giving hugs and creating conga lines. So, um, before I left, so I'm like, that's more action than you would have gotten here if I just, I'd kept you through a breeding season because I had no plans to use them. And, um, I know that they're going to go to feed a family that wants that specific type of meat. So while well, I'm a little, I'm still a little emotional about it. It was, it was nice to see them like in good spirits before I left and they're, they're holding pens and, uh, I'm sad that they're not here. I'm sad that I, I couldn't make keep room for them, but honestly with everybody cinching down on their costs, especially on a farm and we LLC this year. So my, my, um, my profits to costs are a big concern for me. Now, all of a sudden I, I just have started to really pay attention to it a lot more. And this just made a lot of sense. This made a lot of sense. Um, I've tried guys, I've tried for months. I've done my due diligence to market them and try to move them to the best home possible for the, the correct amount that I felt that they were worth and to vet with the correct homes. And I can't tell you how many times I got the tires kicked off of these guys. People want me to drive over two hours without a deposit with no extra offered in gas and were actually very rude when I said, I'm sorry, I don't meet without a deposit because I've been stood up, which is not a lie. I have um, signed up to meet with people and they don't show and then I'm out the cost of gas both ways and I've stressed my animal out without needing to stress them out. So um, that are people asking for pictures upon pictures and videos upon videos of daughters, progeny, you know, what, what do their daughter's lactations look like? What do the udders look like? I've got all of it together guys. Like even right here, like this is what I had as part of my sales ad. And I just, I could not get anybody to seriously bite on them. And I'll be really honest. Um, when I bought Flu, I paid over $700 for him. And um, when I bought uh, Love Bug, I paid over $800 for him. And I wasn't asking for, but maybe a quarter of what I paid for each one of them. So, um you start high and you work your way down low. And I was down to where I'm like, it's this or, or they, they go to a processor because like I've literally am losing too much money offering them at this price and not being able to vet like really where they're going and uh, making sure they get the, the correct level of care. And I wasn't going to do a sales barn because you guys know I just, I don't do sales barns, but I am uh, upset the day I'm sad, but um, this is just, this is part of it. This is the, the rose colored glasses off. This is the ugly part of it. There's no way to really dress it up.